Hello, biology students. Uh, today we will continue talking um, about evolution and uh, look at some of the ways that we organize um, our understanding of organisms and their relationship. And this is a, a nice uh, segue into our following chapter, which is going to be on classification. So we should finish up evolution this week. Um, towards the end of the week, you should get a, another quiz to uh, take, and then we will officially be done with our evolution chapter. So uh, good job on keeping up with everything. So we'll start off here just reviewing a little bit from last week, uh, looking at Darwin's tree of life. And remember, this is a, whether this is a, a photo or a, a duplication, but this is what he had written in his journal. Okay. Uh, it says, I think, and notice here we have specimen A, specimen or organism B, organism C, organism D. And if you can make out any of those scribbles, at one point I think I knew what it said, but looking back it's hard to tell. Okay, um, so how to interpret this? It's sort of like a family tree uh, where branches come off from common points. And we will look at that some more today here. So closely related species are together, closer together on a tree and further away would be less related. So if we go back here, um, we can see that B and C, because they're closer in proximity, if we were to follow the branches of the tree, would be more closely related than um, A and B. And I think that might be what, what this means here. Really have to study that handwriting to tell. And we mentioned this example here uh, last week, looking at a human and uh, a chimpanzee and showing that this point where both of these branches come from, this would be uh, the common ancestor of a chimpanzee and a human. And a lot of people that misunderstand evolution, they say, as we said before, I don't think humans came from, from monkeys or from chimpanzees or gorillas. Um, and really that's not what evolution says. And that would make sense too, because if we came from a chimpanzee, for instance, we know there's still chimpanzees around. So uh, that kind of shows that that level of um, understanding it isn't entirely correct. All right, so in more detail, a couple terms and things here. Um, an evol evolutionary tree represents the relationships among a set of organisms or a group of organisms, which are called a taxa. And we're going to get into classification in our next chapter, which is also called taxonomy. So you can see the relationship there. Tips of the tree represent species, and the nodes, those are the points where the tree branches off. Let me go to node here if we... You know, a branch like that and a branch like that, just like we showed. Um, the nodes represent common ancestors. So two species that split from the same node are called sister groups. These are your closest relatives. Trees depict what we call clades, and a clade is a group of organisms that include the ancestor and all of the descendants. And we try to show evolutionary time through these diagrams. And remember, evolutionary time is a lot uh, different than the time that we experience in our lives. So here's a simple um, way of showing this. And here, if we go back to, I'm going to go back a slide here. If we go back to the definition of clade, clade is a group of organisms that includes an ancestor and all of its descendants. So if we go back here, notice each of these colored rectangles is a clade. So we'll start with a specific clade, such as this one. We have a species, 
another species and its ancestor. Okay, we can see the same basic thing on this side. We have a species, a species and its ancestor. But we could also talk about a larger clade. So we could have one clade within a bigger clade, which would include the common ancestor and this branch, which would be a modern day species. Okay, common ancestor. Another ancestor of two other modern day species. Okay, and all of that is one clade, yet we can also have a clade with everything you see on the screen too. So just a way to, to chunk information and make sense of it. So here, as we mentioned, uh, A and B would be what we call sister groups because they came from a common ancestor. So a common ancestor of A and B, A, B. And, and this is how we would look at our relationship, for instance, to other primates, like a, like a chimpanzee. Okay, um, Our DNA is, I think our DNA only differs somewhere 2, 3, or 4% between us and a chimpanzee. And so we can see that, you know, if we were here and a chimp was here, um, it's undoubtedly correct that we shared a common ancestor. And then C, they call an outgroup, which means uh, not a direct ancestor uh, or a direct descendant of this ancestor, but a previous one that they all share. All right, we can also look at cladograms. Um, cladograms are a little bit different. Um, they're used to show not necessarily the exact relationship between creatures, but instead showing um, from a selection of organisms we are studying, their shared traits. Okay, and so this is not to scale time-wise. So you do have to be careful when you're interpreting it. You can't read it as a, a timeline. Um, a lot of the time has been cut out and shrunk down to fit this all together on one page um, because we all know that you know a shark compared to a bird it's a lot of differences okay so um, don't feel like this is a sudden explanation of how how it would have happened fast okay so what we look at is this baseline here with all the traits or characteristics and then we have a line notice here this is not like a branching family tree style diagram instead it shows a line coming off that baseline and every line coming off is its own organism okay so verte vertebrae and if you guys know what vertebrae is a backbone okay everything beyond this point contains a vertebrae, right? Sharks contain them, ray finned fish, amphibians, primates, and so on. What sharks do not have is they do not have a bony skeleton. They have a cartilage skeleton. So this trait and then all of the creatures that share that trait would be shown after that time frame. four limbs. We know that fish and sharks don't have what we consider limbs, but amphibians, primates, rodents, birds, etc. do. Amniotic egg. That could include an internal egg, such as in a, a mammal. Um, eggs with shells. Okay. No, the Easter bunny does not lay eggs with shells, right? Neither do primates but crocodiles do and birds do. And so a cladogram just tries to show some of the um, common features that creatures share and some of their large scale um, relationships. Okay, here's another cladogram um, showing, you know, we have, we have a fish, of course, we have an amphibian, we have a reptile, we have 
two different mammals. But uh, it just goes to show how, how this can work again. Lungs, the existence of lungs. Out of these creatures, the only one that lacks those are would be a, a salmon, a freshwater fish, which has gills. Claws. Okay, amphibians do not have claws. In case you were wondering. Fur, mammary glands, structures that um, are used to feed the offspring milk or nurse their young, and then opposable thumbs, okay, which means thumbs that can individually touch each finger like you guys have and are important for grasping. All right, so kind of a shorter lesson today. Um, go through some of those diagrams if you're having trouble. Uh, maybe rewatch the video or maybe you can do a, a Google search for cladogram. Um, I'm also going to include a link to a stated clearly video on evidence for evolution. It is a, a about an 11 minute video, pretty short. It's got some great things on there, particularly with whales. And um, I think whales, dolphins, orcas, that group of creatures is a is a very beloved group of creatures for many people. Um, their size, their majestic behavior, um, but also in the fact that they are very intelligent. And so this video will talk about the uh, most accepted theory on how whales came to be. So please watch that. It's, it's going to really help you understand some of these evolution concepts. On Wednesday, we will have a Zoom meeting during our regularly, regularly scheduled class time. So period one kids, that would be 10 a.m. Period five, you guys are at 1230. And period seven, you guys are at 115. And I'll send out a separate link for that. I'll post it right to classroom. Uh, that'll be a time for us to just kind of catch up, visit, touch base a little bit. Um, see if you guys have any questions and then I'll have our last video on our final section of the chapter and uh, a quiz and then we'll be moving on next week to uh, a new a new topic so hopefully this topic is keeping you keeping you interested and um, insightful for you guys okay have a good day. Uh, hopefully your week goes well with distance learning and stay healthy.